A lot of things changing, causes a lot of stress. Sometimes we become very difficult when things are changing. Who in here works with difficult people? Anybody? Yeah, a lot of, lot of hands going up. OK. <laughs> who, who in here are the difficult people? Yeah. <laughs> Would you take your hands and just put them out in front of you? Just put everything down that's in them. And what, what I want you to do is just spin them like this. Just spin, spin, spin. OK, very easy. This will be very easy for you. Now, on the count of three, all I'd like you to do is put your hands together kind of like this with one thumb on top of the other. When I say three, so one, two, three, put them together. All right, look on down at your thumbs. If your left thumb is on top, would you shout out left? left. All right, if your right thumb is on top, shout out right. Right. About 50-50, so some more comfortable left, some more comfortable right. Take them apart, if you will. And let's just do that one more time. Spin, spin, spin. And this time, I want you to put them together with either thumb on top. It doesn't much matter which one ends up on top. One, two, three, put them together. Look on down at those thumbs again. If the same thumb is on top, would you shout out same? Same. All right, if the different thumb is on top, would you shout out different? Different. <laughs> okay. Now, we're not here to make fun of the different people. <laughs> yeah. But we are here to prove a point, and that is something as very s as simple as putting one thumb on top of the other. Most of us, as creatures of habit, will go back to doing it the same way we've done it, just because we're more comfortable with that. As a matter of fact, I want to prove it to you with one final round. Just take your hands, start spinning one last time. Spin, spin, spin. This time, I want you to make sure that the different thumb does end up on top. So if in the last round you ended with the, last, with the left thumb on top, get the right one on top this time. If you ended with the right one on top, then the left one should be on top. For many of you, this will be the most complicated portion of my program. <laughs> All right, you got all that thought process down? One, two, three, we're putting them together differently. <laughs> if it feels a little uncomfortable, would you just shout out, yuck? Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> Almost everybody. You can take them apart. OK. Change can be kind of yucky. I mean, basically, when we're asked to do things that we don't want to do, even if they're good things for us, it causes us a little stress because it's different, it's new, it's unfamiliar, and most of us resist it, and it feels uncomfortable. The first time that I got up before a group was way back in the sixth grade. Mrs. Weir was the name of my teacher. Mrs. Weir, sixth grade English class. We were each asked to give an oral book report. Do you remember those days? I got up in front of the group. I stood behind this, this lectern. Some people call it a podium. You know that thing you hide behind? And I had my book report on it. And I looked out at my classmates. And I looked out at the camera in the back of the room that Mrs. Weir was so kind to provide. <laughs> and I gave everybody my attention-grabbing opening, which went something like this. Good afternoon. My name is. And I had no idea. <laughs> I actually never got to my name. True story, I never got to the book report. I actually ran out of the door that was behind me in tears. Now, there, there's a saying that that which does not destroy us shall make us stronger. Have you heard something like that? So I guess I'm supposed to have learned from that day. And, and I believe the lesson that I learned is that children in the sixth grade, in your time of need and crisis, can be so kind and supportive. <laughs> You could hear things like, slow the videotape down, here's where he starts to cry. <laughs> and that was Mrs. Weir. <laughs> How many worriers do we have in the room? Who, who's a worrier? Well, look at the hands going up. I've got a lot of people. Okay, some of you are thinking, I don't want to raise my hand. Okay, you're kind of worried about that, too. <laughs> but <laughs> here's what happens when you worry. You are wonderful at attracting things into your life. The only problem is you have this exact picture in your mind of what you don't want to attract. Whatever picture you've got in your mind, your mind is going to make it come true. When the spaghetti lands on your shirt, this way you can tell everybody, see, I told you. It's just like the people who say things like, you know, I get sick once a year. Once a year, I get that big cold. And what happens? They do. Whatever you focus on, whatever you set as your focus, that's what you see, that's what you attract into your life. We attract what we fear as well. Bless you. There's that big cold coming on. <laughs> Two years ago, I bought my first new car. 
<laughs> sitting in the dealer's, <laughs> the convertible. I'm sitting in the dealer's parking lot, waiting for the salesman to hand me the final paperwork. I'm kind of just getting used to the new buttons and gadgets. And the salesman comes over, and hands me the, the keys and the paperwork through the window, and he says, you're free to go now, Mr. Greenberg. Thank you very much for, for purchasing your new car. It sure is a beauty. Drive safely. And whatever you do, don't scratch or dent this beauty. <laughs> What picture do you think I now have in my mind? <laughs> I put the car in reverse. I drive three feet. <laughs> I back into a brand new BMW <laughs> that I swear on my life was not there five minutes before. He said, don't scratch or tent this beauty. <laughs> the man had just purchased the BMW. He came running out of the showroom. I have never seen a grown man speechless but he actually was looking at the damage I had done to his car with the words that went something like <laughs> We attract what we fear, whatever picture you have in your mind. My mom called me a couple weeks ago. She says, how's the basement coming? I said, it's almost finished, got the new carpet down, it's looking really good. She says, it doesn't get wet down there, does it? <laughs> I said, I've had the house two years. It's never rained in. So, all right, I just want to make sure. I said, all right, I got to go. I've got a program tomorrow. Go down to the basement to get a box of books for the program. I keep these books next to the water heater. <laughs> Let me say, I used to keep these books next to the water heater. I pick up the box of books, which I have picked up numerous times before. I lift the box of books in my arms. For some reason, this time, my hands don't have the same grip on them. I drop a 45-pound box next to the water heater. There's a little valve. You ever notice this little valve on the bottom of your water heater? It's called a release valve. Okay. You know why? It releases all the water. <laughs> I sheared off the valve 40 gallons every five minutes are flowing into my basement. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Whatever you focus on, the good, the bad, you see it, you attract it, you make it happen. Focus on your dreams and your goals, and don't focus on your fears. How many of you ever had any self-doubt? Would you raise your hand for a moment? OK, about half of you. How many aren't sure? <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've all got self-doubt, but if self-doubt is what's holding you back because you believe certain things that may not be true about yourself, you'll never make the changes that will make you more successful. When I told all my friends, oh, I want to be a professional speaker and trainer, they were very supportive. As a matter of fact, there was only one person who really didn't fully believe it. Yeah, they're pointing. Me. I was the one. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine, an attorney here in town by the name of David Dempsey, good friend of mine from Toastmasters, calls me up one day. He says, David, I know you want to be a speaker. I know you want to be a trainer. There's an opening at Oglethorpe University. They're looking for somebody to teach their public speaking classes. You'd be perfect. What do you think I said to him? No, I cannot do it. I don't have a doctor degree, and I'm sure a university would require one. He said, don't tell them. <laughs> he was not suggesting that I lie. He is an attorney, but he was not <laughs> suggesting that I lie. He was suggesting that I let go of these limitations and focus on what I could do and not what I can't. When I worked for IBM, I was surrounded by some of the most powerful computers in the world and some of the most intelligent people. Same thing at Bell South. But you know, no matter how bright the person, no matter how powerful the computer, the adage holds true. If you put garbage in, you get what? You get garbage out. So the question is very simple. What do you feed yourself? Because sometimes we're feeding ourselves too much garbage. I want to do something kind of fun here for a moment. I want you to select a partner. And your old partners, they're used. So get somebody else for a moment. I'm going to ask one person in your partnership to talk about themselves, about all the positive things that they can do. Okay, And the other person, you're just going to sit there and listen. All right. Now, here's what I need to happen. I need, I need to know who the person who's talking, I need to know who the talker is. So can I get one person from each partnership? Just raise your hand up high so I know who it is. One person from each partnership. Keep that hand in the air. Would you take that hand that's in the air? Take that hand that's in the air, put it on your partner's shoulder, and say, you go first. <laughs> I want to close with this. When I was graduating from high school, my favorite class was physics. And my favorite teacher, yeah, unbelievable. And I'll tell you why. 
because my teacher made it great. I would never have done well at physics. Mr. Abalafia, or Mr. A, as we affectionately called him, made physics fun. And that's why I learned. What he did, final exam came around. Final, final before graduation. Just had to do well on this and I was out of there. He held up the final exams and he said to the group of students, he said, if I catch anybody cheating on this exam, not only do you fail the exam, but you fail the class. You've heard it. I had no reason to worry. He made physics so much fun, I was sure to get an A. As a matter of fact, I was the first one finished with my exam. I picked it up from my desktop. I was just about to get up and hand it in to Mr. A. And as I got up from my chair, I saw all over my desktop physics formulas. Somebody in the earlier class must have cheated and wrote all the formulas down. I did not see them until I was done with the exam. Probably should have reported it earlier, but I didn't see them, and I started to panic. I went up to Mr. A and I said, I've got to tell you something. There's, there's physics formulas written all over my desk. I promise you, I didn't write them. As a matter of fact, I didn't see them until the exam was over. And I'm actually kind of glad I didn't, because I think several of them are wrong. <laughs> I was a little cocky. <laughs> he pulled me aside and he said, David, they're all wrong. I said, what? <laughs> he said, I wrote them. I said, why did you do that? <laughs> he said, look at the desk next to where you were sitting. Physics formulas. He said, look at the row behind where you were sitting. Physics formulas. He said, look at the blackboard way in the back of the room. Physics formulas. On the floor, physics formulas. On every wall of the room, physics formulas scratched in little chalk or, or ink. I said, why did you do this? He said, I wanted to see who would have more faith in their formulas and who would have more faith in other people's. That day, I thought that applied only to physics. Years later, I've learned it applies to much, much more. I leave you with this thought. Follow your own formula. Follow what's in here, and you can't help but succeed. This is David Greenberg. Thank you for watching this tape. I'm very proud that more than 90% of my clients have me back again and again. If your needs call for a fun and energizing kickoff or closing speech, or a content-packed, hands-on workshop on team building, communication, or thriving in the midst of change, please call the number on the label so I can customize a program that exceeds your expectations.